You made this prediction, which we're going to hold you to account on, that <laughs> by the end of this calendar year, and I appreciate we're not even halfway, open source models would be equivalent to the best closed source models. Uh, give us a status check of that prediction, please. I think it's already happened. Open source now is better than closed source for most use cases. Uh, we specialized, customized models on the companies like datasets. Um, I have my uh, Meta Ray-Ban glasses here that are powered by Lama 3, right? We're seeing so many now use cases being powered by open source models. And most of the big tech companies are now publishing open models. Just yeah. last month, we've seen uh, Apple releasing open models on Hugging Face. We've seen NVIDIA, we've seen Snowflakes, we've seen Databricks, we've seen Microsoft. All of them now are publishing open models. There may be some people in attendance who don't agree with him, which is why I asked the question. Well, also, Microsoft published one and then quickly withdrew it from right. some of the reporting yes. because they hadn't stress tested the large language model enough. They hadn't whittled out some of the toxicity checks in particular. Yeah. How are you feeling about the way in which large language models are growing and the way in which governance is developing around it? Well, we're starting to see that the most important question is concentration of power, right? For such an important technology, you don't want a world where just a few companies are controlling it. But that is the world we live in. I don't Do think know? so. I think, I think more and more what we're seeing is that with open source, you can actually distribute power more and you want to reduce the gap between the most powerful companies and the rest of the world. Not only other companies, but policymakers, nonprofits, academia and all of that. And that's the purpose of open source. It reduces the gap between the most powerful companies and the rest of the world. And that's what creates kind of like a sustainable, balanced future for AI and technology as a whole. It's a conversation we are going to have all day long. And, and you point out that basically open source allows more groups to, yeah. to go to work on it. The problem yeah. is, as we're learning, the tens of billions of dollars it, yes. it, it takes to train models with, yes, tens or hundreds of billions of parameters, and then you go lower down. And now what we're hearing is that actually there are the folks doing this running out of cash. Are you, are you seeing that as well? So it's more or less true because, for example, now you can use Lama 3 that really is, has been costly, but that uh, Meta has released and fine tune it for a very like, small amount of money. That's yes. why on Hugging Face, there's over 1 million models that have been yeah. trained by companies. And a lot of these companies are very small and don't have like really, really big, big budget. I feel like today, every single company has to build their own AI Otherwise, they run the risk of being left behind. And that's what we're seeing. And it doesn't require any more really, really big budget. An interesting point, though, that uh, we're going to see this year, though, is that we'll need to find for AI companies better business models. That's, that's what yeah, kind of like you hinted at. Uh, it's something we really focused on at Tugging Face. We are lucky and grateful to be close to profitable. Uh, which is very unusual for, for AI companies. But we're starting to see that uh, there are some ways to uh, generate revenue and not burn insane amounts of, of compute uh, for AI startups today. I mean, how on that profitability perspective of yours, how many paying customers do you now have? Can you give us an update? You've got a million models. What about paying customers? We have more than 10,000 mm -hmm. uh, paying customers. Uh, out of the over 100,000 organizations, more than 4 million AI builders that are using, using our platform. And I think we found the right uh, balance between monetizing, especially with like big companies that are using the platform in private. Enterprise companies. Exactly. In order to fund all the free community open source work that we're doing, and that is always going to stay open source and free, of course. I want to go back to what Ed was saying, though, about people running out of cash. You actually put out a really interesting call on X, basically saying, look, I'm here if you need me. Hugging Face is here if, we need, if there are good people out there building interesting businesses, but you're running out of money. We could be a home for you. Yeah. Are you making acquisitions? Is it, is it aqua hiring that goes on then? We make some acquisitions. We're going to have uh, interesting announcements in the next few weeks, actually. Oh, don't tease us. <laughs> what is the interesting announcement? But uh, I think in general, in AI, you're going to see more and more M&A. Uh, because as, as you said, I think a lot of companies took uh, very risky bets uh, 
uh, a lot of them are running out of money. And at the same time, you have other companies like Hugging Face and, and others that are uh, successful enough to, to be homes. Uh, some of this M&A is going to be weird, right? We've seen that happening a little bit with, uh, with, yeah. with tech, uh, with, with some uh, uh, unusual yeah, uh, marriage examples. of necessity <laughs> rather than yes. choice, maybe. Yes. Yes. But, uh, one thing that's good about summits like these, Bloomberg Tech, by the way, we can go around the room and ask who you're going to be shopping for. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> but, but you get all these people in one place. Uh, you've also used the time uh, that you've been in San Francisco because you, you, you're up in Seattle, right? Hi Miami. Well, Miami, apologies. Yes. Yes. You've been hiring, you've been interviewing yeah. candidates. Uh, is that just a function of the best candidates being here in this city? Or how wide are you casting your net? Yeah, I think, I think San Francisco is still the heart of technology and AI, right? There's so much talent, so, much, so many interesting companies, uh, so many interesting big technology companies be, being here that it's important for us to kind of like uh, have a foot on the ground here. We have a team already here, but we're also hiring a uh, community lead for, for Hugging Face here. Um, Applications being taken. Yes. Uh, there's a really massive fight and struggle for AI talents right now uh, with inflation of, of packages everywhere. Um, but what we're seeing is that when you, when you have a mission that's like uh, interesting to candidates, like with open source, yeah. then you can attract really good talents. That's one of the reasons why also we're seeing big tech doing more and more open source, right? If you look at Meta, uh, with all the great work Isn't that they're doing on favorite? open source. Isn't that your favorite? You keep on, I mean, you've only really mentioned number three. You're trying to cajole Google into going even more open source. I think as long as companies contribute to the world and to the field with, with open source, with open research, um, I think it, it benefits uh, everyone. I think we've, we've lost a little bit uh, this way in, in the US for the past few years. Uh, if you look at AI five years ago, most of it was, was open source and open science. It changed a little bit when some companies started to make money and, and change a little bit their, their approach to things. Uh, but I think it would be positive for the world to get back to an AI domain that is more open, more transparent, more inclusive. Uh, you you asked a calendar date now, by the way, because you told us you're going to announce yeah. some news when you're ready. Four weeks. Yeah. We're holding We're it here. to it. Thank yes. you. <laughs>